Hi, everyone. I am Sonia Dolan. I'm one of the co-founders of Metal Health. And today I am speaking with one of our counselors, Tom Grothe, about who he works with and what he loves doing most. Thank you, Tom, for being with us. Will you introduce yourself to everyone? Uh, sure. Thank you, Sonia. It's great to be here. And it's lovely to talk with folk interested in mental health. Uh, as Sonia said, I'm one of the counselors at Mental Health. We're a broad spectrum of folk. Uh, and I come to this work from 45 years of work mm -hmm. in uh, healthcare. Uh, I have worked as a registered nurse, as a nurse practitioner, and as a marriage family therapist. In those professions, I have worked in hospice care. I have provided primary medical care to folk as a nurse practitioner. I have worked as the primary medical provider of really old homebound people. And I have also worked as a marriage family therapist, uh, working with uh, developmental issues and most particularly multiple loss and mm -hmm. grief. So I've been around a couple different blocks and have witnessed my share of patients and families uh, who are doing their best and working through their illnesses. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I like to offer what I have learned and what I have experienced to people who may be going through some hard times. Yeah. And I'm, with all those different locations and years of working, how are there any themes on how you see serious chronic illness, terminal illness affect the people that you're working with? Oh, yeah. Uh, I You know, I think any type of serious illness really has the possibility of changing us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there's your life before your diagnosis and your life afterwards. And it has the possibility of really dragging a person down but it also has the opportunity to make you consider what's valuable in your life and mm -hmm. what really matters now. And I have seen so many people grow and expand and become more authentically who they are in grappling with some really hard stuff. And that's always been terribly impressive and very moving to me to watch someone grow in the midst of their suffering. Do you think that people have the capacity to do that on their own? Or do you think it does in fact take discussion and community and someone to bounce off of to find that momentum forward? Well, I do believe that any serious diagnosis or illness requires a community. Hmm. I think that none of us can do this alone. And that sometimes in the midst of the seriousness of the illness, we find friendships and connection and open heart in a way that hmm. we hadn't imagined when we were young and healthy. Hmm. Um, so uh, I think that it's it's really good to work through and process some of what you're thinking and feeling. And so mental health exists kind of to be a reflection. Uh, you know, there's your care in your medical care with your doctors and nurses, and mental health can be off to the side as a moment for you to consider what this means to you, both in physical and emotional terms, but also maybe existential terms or spiritual terms. Hmm. We can open the conversation uh, if that's what you want uh, and need. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the, the plug for metal. I appreciate it. I, I know that, you know, for every counselor that works in metal, the goals of um, the goals for them are very much wrapped up in what the goals are for the person that they're working with. But what for you do you are your goals when you're working with people? What do you want to get them to or help them with? That's a good question, Sonia, because I do think uh, I often come to a counseling session projecting. And mm -hmm. I think it's good and I think that's bad. But I know that I do that. 
And, you know, it's the nurse practitioner in me, it's the primary medical provider in me that wants to hear what's going on in your physical condition and your diagnosis. What do you perceive is going on with your illness? And then I start anticipating what could happen next for you. Sure. So a lot of times, my goal in working with folk who are struggling with chronic or progressive or terminal illnesses is to honestly and neutrally discuss what might happen next. I like to lay out possibilities for folk for them to really think through and consider how they want to proceed with their care. So a lot of my focus is helping folk anticipate what could happen right. and then helping them problem solve a, a plan of care that will honor what their goals are in their life. I love that. I think of it as just expectation setting. And when you know all the different things that might happen, having someone who understands, like you said, your illness and what that trajectory looks like and can kind of think forward for you takes a lot of the scariness out of when you get to that moment for me to have someone be like, that's normal. That's okay. We're going to, this is how we're going to deal with it. I expectation management. I say this all the time in my life. Like it's everything I could be at the the grocery store. I could be at a restaurant. As long as I'm kind of told like your heads up, this is what's happening. I'm fine. That's, that's all I need. It's just someone to be like, I've, I've seen what you're saying. This is the plan forward. If this happens. Yeah. There's extreme value in that. And so, okay, great. We all need expectation setting. I can't think of anyone who doesn't. So who are the people who should think about working with you? Well, you know, I've worn a lot of different hats in my careers. Um, so I have done psychotherapy with folk. I am count comfortable with counseling and supportive therapy where I think I have a different viewpoint is having spent so many years as a primary medical provider and a nurse practitioner. So mm -hmm. people will come to me with uh, fairly dire diagnoses, maybe of dementia or Parkinson's, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, diabetes, mm -hmm. just it, it, as something that they're struggling with. And I will have the medical comfort mm -hmm. with what their symptoms are and what their medications might be. But I will also have be the person who might be able to can say, you know, here's what this disease might be doing to you on an emotional sense or an existential sense and try yeah. to integrate sort of all aspects of who we are. So I would say the, the people I feel I can really help is uh, folk who are struggling with um, a pretty bad diagnosis. Maybe mm. it's at the beginning, maybe it's at the end, maybe it's in the middle and their families. Um, mm. because I, I think families are often forgotten and yeah. I think that families are just also affected by serious diagnoses. So I might uh, sometimes counsel couples or families mm -hmm. or individuals. I might counsel caregivers because, of course, mm -hmm. I have five years of being a professional caregiver and I've cared for many caregivers. So I understand some of what they're going through, too. <laughs> okay, so everybody. The answer is everyone. <laughs> Not a bad answer. Thank you so much, Tom, for sharing a bit about yourself with us. We really appreciate it. All right. Nice. Nice to meet you all. Take care. <laughs>